grasslands are as you might know are one of the vital ecosystems that provides a tremendous ecological and economic services but these are also the ecosystems that are uh, one of the most neglected ones beyond the protected areas in india we do not have much of the grassland left because they have been converted to the agricultural lands in manas national park we have a grassland of the type uh, known as sab himalayan tall grasslands Manas are home to many uh, threatened and rare species such as the hog deer, Bengal florica, and the one-horned rhinoceros, Asiatic water buffalo, uh, to name a few. The grassland in uh, Manas is facing tremendous threat from invasion by different alien invasive uh, uh, plants. Arinac recognizing this threat and to address this threat initiated a study back in 2013 initially we undertook a survey to understand the distribution pattern of the invasive plants and also we conducted experiments to uh, find out the best way to control this invasive during our survey we found that uh, in manas in, in the grasslands of manas mostly uh, two uh, invasive plants uh, namely the Promolina odorata and the Mycenae micrantha were found in abundance and uh, this has ap approximately affected uh, around 30% uh, of the existing grasslands. Based on the information uh, from field, we conducted some modeling where we have identified that if there are no management intervention in place, the entire uh, grasslands of Manas is vulnerable to inv uh, invasion. So what we did, we conducted experiments applying four different techniques uh, to identify the best uh, control method to arrest invasion. Manually uprooting the uh, invasive plants was the best suited method to get rid of inv invasive plants in Manas. And also it had an added advantage, we, we, uh, we engaged people from the fringe areas to get these uh, invasive plants removed. So it kind of provided a daily wage, a source of income from, for these fringe villages as well. This is one of our restoration sites, which is approximately a 2 hectare of area. This site was completely invaded by Chromolina and Mycenae. The invasion was as high as 90% and there were no signs of animals. When we uh, took some historical data from the forest personnel, they mentioned that the area was dominated by grass species like Ari Arianthus, Phragmites, and or Orundodonus. This was a really potential area for species like uh, Asiatic buffalo, uh, one on rhinoceros, and other large mammals. Here what we did, we first identified the site where restoration work uh, would take place, then we collected information on the, on the vegetation type and then we manually uprooted the invasive plants, leaving whatever the grasslands were present. After that, we fenced the area to protect it from grazing. We still have uh, problems of you know cattle grazing to a certain amount, so we wanted to protect it from grazing. Important aspect uh, before the removal is due is the timing. Uh, we uh, we manually approach this invasive plant just before f uh, the flowering uh, stage to so the minimal dispersal and the spread of the invasive plants. But again, uh, manually approaching the invasive is a very tedious job and it's, it requires a long term commitment and resources. Daily, a hectic area at Bijon Manu Kamkori. Also, it is a grassland boot. Hoi kise? That are bejo. Amar pura hiyoteyo gaur manu ma kha jigita kam kore hiyoto ro lab hoy. Inba ami hiyoto engage kori rakha parsu. Hiyoteyo buji paise manas ki manasor bikhe. Ami ani hiyoto ko allop solo bujang. Agote amar manas kon kia sil. It is a ki hoy gol. It is hiyoteyo boot kini buji paise. আগতে বহুত গ্রাসলেন আছিল লাহে লাহে গ্রাসলেন নাইকা হৈ গিছে এটোর কারণে হিওটেও ভাবিছে যে আগর নিছনা যদি আমার গ্রাসলেন কিটা ঘুরি আহে এক্সপেরিমেন্টস ইন দা সেন্ট্রাল রেঞ্জ 
we have found that it needs uh, depending again on the grassland type it needs a uh, three to five years of continuous effort and um, a monitoring to uh, stop invasion and uh, bring back so that the grasslands can come of its own fifth year we, we could see that the native grass the entire grass community came up and we removed the uh, fences and since then the grassland has been continuing to grow Once the invasive plants were removed, uh, the native grass species came up. Uh, this is the second year of treatment in this restored uh, sites where we can already see that the, the, num uh, the abundance of native grass species have increased from the last year. We plan to uh, continue the treatment in this plot for the next three years so that entire <coughs> grassland community can come up and it can grow of its own. The grasslands in Manas are not in the climax stage and they need to be um, uh, maintained by different factors. We do not have natural factors like flood that could you know, manage uh, grasslands. So the active management of this grassland is the only way out. By applying this technique, we could so far revive around uh, 5 square kilometer of grasslands in Manas. But it's a still a long way to go. There are so many uh, threatened grassland obligate species and they require continuous uh, patches of grasslands without any inv uh, invasive species to survive. So we plan to continue our uh, work over the next <coughs> few years so that we could have uh, you know, pristine grassland habitat for aiding in long-term conservation of this grassland dependent species. RNAC has an ambitious plan of reviving the entire grassland habitat to aid in long-term conservation of the threatened grassland obligate species as well as, uh, you know, uh, safeguard the human will. I am Dr. Alolika Sena. I am a wildlife biologist working with RNAC and currently I am working on a grassland restoration project in Manas National Park.